All right, guys, KB32 here, check it out. So we're sitting in the Freedom Studios. I don't know if you can notice this or not, but I thought it was really cool. I got the red and blue lighting behind me. Seems like that's what everybody does. But anyway, uh, I wanted to do a little video on rifle scopes, uh, particularly uh, on this guy right here. This is a Leupold. This is their Mark IV with the uh, really cool TMR, and uh, this is their M2. And we'll talk about a couple things real quickly, but before we do, I wanted to uh, chat about a couple things. Now, the evolution of scopes is kind of interesting. Back in the day when they put this thing together, this uh, originally was uh, put on one of the sniper rifles uh, in the field, and I think it's the M1A1. And uh, the reason I bought it is because I have a Mark 12 Mod Zero. Now, the uh, original Mark 12 Mod Zero had a two and a half to eight. They're hard to come by because they've been discontinued for many years. But I saw this guy right here and I was really excited about it. I said, screw it, let's do it. But this is a three and a half to 10 second focal plane scope. And for a lot of purists out there about their Mark 12 clones, this is gonna probably drive everybody mad, but it, not me, I could care less. Um, what's cool about this? Well, it's it's kind of the original. It's uh, what they fielded in the, uh, in the uh, industry, uh, in the military, on the Mark 12, the uh, and on the uh, the M1A1 uh, sniper rifle, and it's in the scheme of things today, it's not worth buying. And and why did I buy it? Because I wanted to put it on that Mark 12. And we'll we'll do a, a video specifically detailing this guy. But what I wanted to do was talk about the evolution. Uh, this scope. Uh, the unique thing about scopes back in the day is they had a mill dot reticle or a hash mills, mill hashes, uh, and I'll show you what the reticle looks like on this guy. But the turrets were in MOA. So you really couldn't use, like if you were to zero this thing in and you knew you were like uh, three tenths of a mill right, four tenths high, you had to, to, to put that into uh, MOA to get that taken care of. So that's where the downfall in this thing. And also it is a uh, for second focal plane scope, which means that the reticle, uh, no matter what power you have it on the, the uh, zoomer ring here, it's going to stay the same in there. It does not change in relationship with the target like it would on any of these guys. Okay, so say for instance, I think for a DMR rifle, this guy right here is probably one of the better ones on the market. If you're in the if you're a budget-minded individual and you're not worried about spending, you know, it's thirty-five hundred dollars on a Schmidt and Bender or something like that. The uh, this guy right here, this is the uh, primary arms. This is your two and a half to ten. You know, I can't remember what uh, I think this has the Raptor reticle. But the cool thing is. You've got zero turret stops. This does not have turret stops. So once you zero it in, you got to make sure that it goes back to uh, zero when you do it. Now, you it, this is set up for a 308, 168 grain out of a 20 inch barrel. It actually says it right there. Uh, but with a 77 grain at zero distances, different zero distances, this will actually match up pretty well to it out to six or 700 yards. And you uh, use the turret in it, for your range uh, as opposed to say for instance a BDC that's set into this guy right here or uh, using the reticle uh, in mills. You're following with me, right? This is set up with the Tacticam on it because we're using it to do some video and some tracking uh, of the reticle. But that's the evolution of where we are today. You've got a $600 scope versus say a uh, $1,300 scope. Now, if I did not have a Mark 12, would I have bought this thing? Probably not. Uh, the glass on this is impeccable, though. I mean, it is, you know, Leupold glass, and it is professional level right here. Uh, one of the other scopes that I would point out that is really good, and it was on the Mark 12, was this guy right here. This is their sight mark. This is their rapid, uh, and, and this is one of the, I think, one of the uh, a really unsung hero on the market. Um, and the reason being is that you've got excellent glass in this thing. The reticle is okay. Uh, it's just a cr cross with uh, drop points on it, and it's set out to 100, 200, 300, 400, 500 yards. Uh, it is a lit reticle. Uh, it is MOA adjustments on the top, uh, but as you can see on here, it does have my Arms Inc. scope mounts. And the reason this is here today is because I'm going to remove these scope mounts and I'm going to put it on this guy. Once we go ahead and do this, we'll take this out into the field and do a full-blown review 
shooting some 77 grains out the distance. Should be a lot of fun. That rifle is uh, balls to the wall, uh, and it can, it's good out to 1,000 yards with 77 grain. Um, this is more, I, I, I say, more relevant to or more consistent with the uh, two and a half to eight. This is actually a uh, three to 12, which makes it even better. Um, and it is a 32 millimeter uh, lens op, uh, objective out here where this guy right here is a 40. So you can see the differences in the size. And again, like I said, I wouldn't buy this thing unless it was uh, for that specific rifle. I've always had a dream. I wish we could do a two and a half to eight on it, but whatever. Um, but the, here's the thing, another thing. You can buy this scope with a mill dot reticle in it with a mill turret, which is the way it should be. And that was the development back in the day when you had Americans building scopes or designing scopes. They put the MOA because we were all about MOA, but the reticle was in mills. So anyway, just a real short video talking about the differences. Uh, I think uh, if you want to go over KB32TAC.com, check out the, a couple of the videos on there. We do have some links uh, back to Primary Arms, PSA, and a couple of other companies uh, that help the channel out. But uh, yeah, there you go, man. How about that? Um, with that being said, I uh, hope you liked the video. Oh, but <laughs> before we end, let's talk about this guy right here. This is the 3 to 18 with the uh, Apollo reticle setup for the 6.5 Creedmoor in 140 grain. Uh, this uh, has been a proven scope for me. I've uh, hit every target out to a thousand yards with that this bad boy without even touching the turrets. And this is going to go on Justin's final mission uh, rifle giveaway. And I'll be uh, working with the, uh, the Crazy Scotsman on that. We're also got a couple videos we're going to be putting out this week. Uh, these guys right here, this is Hits Arms. This is their little laser snap cap. And I'm using this to do uh, draw practice and bringing up and, and pressing out and pulling the trigger to get the perfect sight alignment. And that's going to be interesting to show you how I'm working with this guy because it also is good for the pistol caliber carbine. Um, just released today, CMMG, this is their new linear comp. And uh, this is a neat little booger right here. This is set up for 45 ACP, which is going to go on the Banshee. And uh, one of the reasons why it's not on the rifle right now uh, is because I left that booger sitting in my seat at my office in my house. So, yeah, that's no good. It does come with a uh, uh, crush washer and a comp, but we'll be doing an individual review on this thing. They just released this today. So with that being said, guys, I hope you like this video. Just a little bit of break from the norm of all that hardcore politics has gotten to be a little bit out of control. And uh, name that song. It's Boy 32 If you like the video, please give it a thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't done so. Support the red, white, and blue. God bless America. God bless those men, women in uniform 24-7 for our freedom. Freedom is not free. And let's see, where was this guy made? Machine assembled, designed, USA. How about that? There you go. It's Boy 32 I am out of here. Y'all be good. Bam.